games, games, so many games. My pickups from Japan, guys. Welcome to Resell Robin, guys. Uh, like I said uh, in the previous video, we're actually going to be doing a video basically covering my pickups for when I was in Tokyo about five months back. Or four months back, somewhere in there. Four, mo four months back. Uh, it was an awesome time. I love going to Japan. Um, and this is the first time I actually went uh, thrifting in Japan. And this was a big thing for me because I was always curious, like can you thrift like in japan and surprisingly i picked up so many amazing games in japan for so cheap i, I absolutely love japan um i also picked up quite a few things for my collections like i'm really into import games now as well on top of everything else i think import games might be one of the most slept on markets for america right now so many good games never played Losing the, like, time, like, not being able to pick up games that are never released, uh, certain series that I personally love. I think, again, import games, I think, are a very untapped market. I love picking this stuff up from a resale standpoint. You can make so much money doing this, but more so on this one, it's it's the gamer in me. I, I love this stuff. And we're just going to go over some stuff. A lot of the stuff I picked up for my personal collection, there is a lot more stuff I'm not even going to cover that I picked up to resell to cover the cost of the whole trip, which was amazing. But this is stuff more so that I picked up for myself. Uh, and shout out to uh, Book Off and the, the subsidiaries of that. They are amazing thrift stores out in Tokyo. Uh, if you're ever out there or any of the surrounding areas, uh, you got to check them out. You can find just such awesome stuff. And there's another one that starts with an S, and I forget the name of it, but it's like a blue symbol. It's also amazing. Two amazing thrift stores. The one suggestion I recommend to um, people that are going to Japan, uh, Akihabara is amazing. It's my favorite place in Japan, one of them. But with that being said, like if you're going to like buy a lot of games and stuff, it's overpriced, man. It's overpriced, like Super Potato. I'm looking at you right now. Like it's one of the most famous game stores in Japan, but my God, it's charging full on American eBay prices, not Japan market prices. Which, when you get out of Tokyo and you start going to suburbs and that stuff, you will realize the difference. And it's night and day. Not to say there isn't some cool stuff to be found in Akihabara, as far as like collectibles you need. I did buy some games in Akihabara, but it was more of stuff. It's more modern and more stuff that I wanted to get into my collection. And I guess that's a good way segue point. We'll start out with some of my Nintendo Switch pickups. Um, I kind of had a big uh, thing I wanted to do. Uh, I'm trying to pick up all the Fatal Frames that were not released in the U.S. And one of the ones I really was looking for was this Fatal Frame on the Nintendo Switch. I think I picked it up for like... I want to say it was like 2,800 yen, which is right now our money conversion rate is really good so it's basically like 20 bucks and that was an awesome pickup on the switch i went ahead and picked up this fatal frame on the switch as well and it was another like 30 dollar game uh mission accomplished on that one i was so excited and when i was out there i also picked up i don't even know what game this is it's like wings of darkness it's, it's like a shmup kind of cool looking uh switch game i've never seen it released in the u.s but it was only like ten dollars so I was like, why not? Uh, this one I know for sure didn't get uh, released in the U.S., but it's When They Cry on the Nintendo Switch, and I believe it's just a compilation of all the different When They Cry that released back on the PS2 and all that stuff. Uh, obviously, it won an award, and I picked it up for like 15 bucks, and I was like, this is never getting released in the West, and this is something I wanted to add. The last one, I heard really good things about this RPG, and it is... Uh, the Tower of Children. I've heard really good things about this Nintendo Switch game. Uh, it's like an RPG, I think. Uh, it looks really cool. I picked this one up because I wanted to play this one. Um, super stoked about those. That was more like some pricier stuff that I picked up. Uh, but it's just like some Switch stuff that I wanted to add to my collection. So why not, right? That's what that's for. Uh, we're going to move on to... Um, 
a couple of more of the more expensive things I picked up. I picked up uh, the Dragon Quest Collection on the Nintendo Wii. This never got released in the U.S. I believe it has Dragon Quest 1 through 5? Yeah, 1 through 5 on the Nintendo Wii. It's, and it's kind of like the Mario and the Kirby box set. I think I got this one. I don't have a tag on it anymore. But I think I got this one for right around like $15. Oh, so excited. I think it goes on eBay for like 50 bucks or something. But I don't care. I, I was super excited to add this to my Wii collection. Uh, and then you start getting into the Wii. There was, of course... The same boat, uh, the Fatal Frames that were released on the Nintendo Wii. Uh, again, I picked those up for I think like around twenty-ish dollars each. Uh, this was this was on my big list. This was my things to get was the, all the Fatal Frames, which mission accomplished. Super excited to have these on my collection. Uh, and then on the Wii, I also picked up. And this is where you get into this, like, insane prices. I picked up Soul Eater on the Wii. This is a anime fighting game, I believe, that never got released in the U.S. Uh, it's a shame, because Soul Eater is an awesome anime if you've never played it. Uh, it's only 300 yen, so right now with our conversion, that's like seventy for this game right here. It goes for like 30 bucks online, but it's seventy on this one on the Wii. And then I also picked up Tales of Graces, on the Nintendo Wii, this never got a U.S. release for this version of Tales of. It was complete, which I was really excited about. Uh, 100 yen. So, 70 cents, guys. 70 cents for Tales of Graces on the Nintendo Wii. Super excited about those. Awesome pickups. Uh, I did get one game on the Wii U while I was there. And, of course, you probably guessed it. The Fatal Frame that released on the Wii U. Uh, I paid 27... Yeah, 2,700 yen, so right around like $20 for this, and that completed all of my Fatal Frames. But now we're going to get more into the bulk of the point of this video. That was my more expensive pickups and stuff, but now let's get into the insane thrifting pickups I got in Japan. Um, we got a complete in box Mario Party on the GameCube for 200 yen. Dollar twenty. Uh, Mario Party Seven, a hundred yen. Again, seventy cents, guys. Uh, this was a really cool pickup. It's uh, one piece on the GameCube, uh, complete in box, and it was two hundred and seventy yen, so like a dollar seventy. Awesome pickup right here. I'm super excited about these GameCube games. I really think I want to start collecting uh, GameCube games on the the import GameCube games. I, I really like the little boxes and stuff. I think it's really cool. And I think it'd be super cheap to collect for, and I think it would be awesome to go for, like, um, Japanese import GameCube collection, because all you gotta do is buy, like, an import GameCube. Like, 20 bucks. You can get the Spice Orange one, but that's, like, 60. And then pick these games up. You can get, like, Mario Sunshine there. I didn't find it. I, was, I had so much to buy, but I think it was, like, 300 yen. Super excited about these. Um, we will go, uh, I picked up one DS game. This was actually on my list to pick up and it was the Pokemon typing game on the DS. A hundred yen. It was complete. Uh, I'm trying to pick up a lot of Pokemon games, but a hundred yen, 70 cents. Uh, you can actually, they, I think for $10 over there, or the equivalent of $10, probably like seven hours. Uh, you can get it with the keyboard. I didn't find it uh, when I was thrifting, but I was super stoked to pick this up for 70 cents. Uh, I mean, it's insane what you can get while you just go out and look. Um, let's do... I got a couple of boxed uh, Super Famicom games. I actually got Mario Kart complete in box with Super Nintendo at Super Famicom for 900 yen, so right around $6.00. I picked up Donkey Kong on the Super Famicom box for 400 yen, so like 280. And I got Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom for 480, so right around like two something as well. Like getting some boxed Super Famicom games were awesome. I'm going to try to pick up a lot more of those on my next trip to Japan. I'm going out there in April, so. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to like do a little vlog of 
me picking up some thrift stuff, showing you guys some of this awesome stuff I picked up in Japan. Uh, we're gonna go over the loose uh, Famicom stuff, Super Famicom stuff I picked up. Uh, we got Chrono Trigger on the Super Famicom for 200 yen. We got uh, G Gundam, it's like a fighting game, on the Super Famicom for 200 yen. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho for the Super Famicom for 100 yen. Uh, a Gundam game? I don't know much about this one, but it was 200 yen. But a Gundam game. I love Gundam, so I had to pick that up. A different uh, Yu Yu Hakusho game. Again, it was 100 yen. And a different Gundam F91 for 200 yen. So, again, that's, when I say 200 yen, it's like a dollar or something. Uh, I got Dragon Ball Z fighting game for the Super Famicom for 100 yen. I picked up F-Zero. <laughs> yeah, good game, right? For... 100 yen. We got Dragon Quest 4 for 200 yen. Final Fantasy 6 for 200 yen. Uh, Kirby Super Deluxe on the Super Famicom for 100 yen. And Mario RPG for 400 yen. And the most expensive one I picked up Zelda Ocarina, I'm sorry, Link to the Past for 900 yen, so six, seven dollars for Zelda on the Super Famicom. Uh, awesome pickups, guys. We're gonna add those to my collection. Get these out of the way. Uh, we'll go over the regular Famicom. I picked up uh, Dragon Quest 4 for 100 yen. Dragon Quest 3 for 100 yen. Uh, Sorry, Dragon Quest 2. This is Dragon Quest 3 for 100 yen. Uh, picked up Mario, the original, of course, for 100 yen. Mario Brothers 3 for 100 yen. I picked up uh, Dragon Ball Z 3. It's a fighting game on the Famicom. Uh, it was 200 yen. And I picked up This the North Star for 200 yen. These are some Famicom games I picked up. I was super excited about those. Uh, that's insane. Uh, let's go over the N64 next. So I picked up Mario, uh, Paper Mario for 400 yen. I got Mario Party 2 for 200 yen. I got Pokemon Stadium 2 for 100 yen. Uh, Pokemon Snap for 100 yen. We'll do those last, because those are the most excited about. Uh, original Mario Party for 100 yen. Diddy Kong Racing for 100 yen. The original Pokemon Stadium for 100 yen. Uh, Mario 64 for 300 yen. Mario Kart for 100 yen. And these are two that I was actually excited to find because these were not released in the U.S. Uh, Custom Robo on the N64 for 300 yen. So, again, $1.70. And this was my favorite pickup. I paid 900 yen for this. Um, so, like, six eighty. dollars uh, Animal Crossing. The first release for Animal Crossing never got released in the U.S. for the N64. So, I was really excited about picking up Animal Crossing on the N64. Not something you see very often, but... Definitely worth picking up, for sure. Uh, we'll do a quick rundown of some PSP stuff I got. Um, this is all, all these were 100 yen. I picked up, uh, and again, 100 yen, 70 cents. 70 cents. Uh, Tales of Eternity on the PSP. Uh, looks like some Gundam fighting game. I had to pick it up for 100 yen. Uh, Tales of Heroes Twin Brave on the PSP. Tales of Versus for the PSP. Uh, and then I got Radiant Mythology for the PSP. And three different Hatsumi Miku games for the uh, PSP for 100 yen piece. I was really excited about these. These are always I, I, it's a guilty pleasure. I love the Hatsumi Miku games on the PSP. But again, you can't go 70 cents, right? Like, what do you... Do you even... I don't know. Uh, and this was one of my favorites. 
We're saving the PlayStation 2 and 1 for last, but super stoked about Sega Saturn stuff. Now, Sega Saturn was notoriously crap in the U.S. Uh, not a lot released for it. There were some good gems on it. Mostly, it didn't do well. In Japan, they had so many games that came out on it, and I just went crazy on it. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of Evangelion. It's like my favorite anime of all time. Uh, so any Evangelion game I could get on the Sega Saturn, I grabbed up. Uh, all these were... 100 yen each almost. Uh, this one was 100 yen. I think this is like a... Pachinko? Not Pachinko. Pachinko maybe? Something, not Pachinko. Uh, help me in the comments down below. It's the, the gambling game in Japan. That's what this one is. Uh, this is Girlfriend to Steal. It's actually a dating sim for Evangelion. I really happy to find that on Saturn. Uh, this game called uh, Enemy Zero. It looks like it's a either a sci-fi could be like a RPG or something. It looked it looked interesting. And it was 100 yen. Uh, I was really excited about this one. It's the Knights Winter Edition for the Sega Saturn. I bought this for 300 yen, but I definitely picked that one up. Love Knights. Uh, we'll do that one and that one last. Uh, this one called Dota. I don't know anything about this one. It looks like a survival horror on the Sega Saturn, but it was 100 yen. Same with this one. It looks like some kind of like RPG or horror game on the Saturn for 100 yen. Uh, I don't know the name of this one to all, at all, to be honest. But it's definitely an RPG when I look at the back, and it's 100 yen, so snagging that one. I don't know much about this game. I don't know what this is. Help me in the comments down below, but it's an Atlas game. And I was like, 100 yen for an Atlas game on Sega Saturn. I'm going to get this. Uh, what is this? This is definitely a fighting game on the Sega Saturn, so you got to go. can't go wrong with a good fighting game for Sega Saturn. Uh, Shining Wisdom. This is definitely an RPG on the Sega Saturn. It was 100 yen. Uh... RPG, don't know anything about it, but 100 yen on the Sega Saturn. Now, I know what this is. This is Sakura Wars on the Sega Saturn, and this is definitely another RPG. This is an awesome game, by the way. I've played it in the U.S. release for that. And uh, that brings me to a U.S. game that I love that got a Sega Saturn release, and I had to pick it up for 500 yen Grandia on the Sega Saturn. Fantastic game. It's like three bucks. And this was my favorite find, to be honest, because... I don't know anything about this one, but it's Shin Megami Tensei, or Shin Megami, uh, for Sega Saturn, and I don't know a lot about it, but it was only 500 yen, so for three bucks, a Shin Megami game for Sega Saturn, oh, we're definitely getting that. Hands down. Got to. We'll move to PS2. I know we got a lot going on. Uh, I got Evangelion on the PS2. Uh, this one I actually paid... Paid up for this one. I was actually looking for this one. It was Girlfriend to Steal, and I paid uh, 10 bucks for this one. Uh, this one, a Gundam game for 100 yen. Another Gundam game for 100 yen. Another Gundam game for 100 yen. Uh, this anime I love. I don't know anything about this game, how it plays or anything, but it's Gunslinger Girl on the PS2. It was 100 yen. This game series needs no introduction. Tales of Destiny 2. For 100 yen. Uh, I love this anime growing up. Roroni Kenshin on the PS2 for $5. Or 700 yen. Uh, I don't know anything about this one. Blood the Last Vampire, but it was 200 yen. It's an anime. I don't know how the game is or anything like that, but it says Production IG, which is a great animation company. But the PS2 for two bucks. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist game on the PS2. It was 100 yen. A different Evangelion game. I got this one for 100 yen. Tales of Symphonia for the PS2 for 100 yen. Great game. Uh, D and Angel. This is an anime I loved growing up. I see it looks like some kind of strategy game or something. Looks It's cool. 100 yen, so why not? Uh, when They Cry, I was talking about that on the Switch earlier. I picked it up, one of the releases for the PS2 for 100 yen. Uh, a two-parter. I don't know if these are connected or what, but this is actually a series. Um, 
an anime series, uh, Kino's Journey. I don't know anything about the PS2 releases. I didn't know they made PS2 games for it. But I was excited, and for 100 yen, I was like, I gotta pick it up. Really cool looking One Piece uh, fighting game. It was 100 yen. And then Fate Stay Night. Uh, looks like an anime. It might even be like a dating sim or something. But Fate Stay Night, it was 100 yen. So I was definitely picking that one up on PS2. Add that to my collection. Lastly, we'll go over PS1 real fast. I picked up uh, Legend of Lagaya on the PS1 for 100 yen. Uh, front mission on, front, yeah, front mission on PS1 for 100 yen. Uh, Legend of Mana on the PS1 for 100 yen. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Tales of Destiny on PS1 for 100 yen. Final Fantasy Tactics on the PS1 for 100 yen. Wild Arms on the PS1 for 100 yen. Brave. Uh, Fencer Musashi on the PS1 for 100 yen. I got uh, Biohazard 2 and 3 for 100 yen each on PS1. I'm excited about those. Uh, this is a horror game that I have no clue about. I think it's Mari or something like that, but it was 100 yen. Never got released in the US. Uh, Gundam game that never got released. These are all 100 yen, by the way, all of these games, unless I say otherwise. Uh, Zeta Gundam on the PS1. Uh, this one was 400 yen, but I had I was so excited. Clock Tower 2 on the PS1. Uh, I got a Shaman King fighting game on the PS1. Uh, we got One Piece. It's a... looks like a strategy game. We got Prince of Tennis. Uh, two different Gundam games. Uh, Roroni Kenshin for this one. That one's cool. Uh, Case Closed or Detective Conan, whichever one you prefer to call it. Uh, we're going to do that one last, I think. Because that was like the... Girlfriend of Steel on the PlayStation 1 as well. So I was happy to get that. That's an uh, Evangelion game. Uh, Tales of Phantasma. I don't think this got a... U.S. release. It did. It did get a Game Boy release on it, but it didn't get a PS One release. I don't believe. So I was really excited about that. Picked up uh, Final Fantasy Eight, Seven, and Nine at a hundred yen a piece. So I got. I finished out my Final Fantasies on there. That was awesome. And the biggest one I was excited that I don't even think got a release here was the Chocobo Tenth Anniversary Collection. And it actually still has the original seals and stuff on it. It's really cool. Um, this one, I don't even remember ever getting a U.S. release. Now, this is actually a $70 game in the U.S. I could be wrong. But it was uh, 10 bucks, so I was super stoked to pick this one up. And that's just a quick breakdown of what I picked up, guys. Um, and it's just a quick video today. I'm going to have a Nintendo Switch, uh, you know, standard Hidden Gems video. So I got it rolling out soon. But I just wanted to get this one going and, like, show you guys... Some of the awesome pickups I had in Japan and like, and to tell you guys, like if you can find your way into Japan, you can get some amazing deals. And again, from the standpoint of making money, I know you got some people don't like to hear it, but I think import games are definitely slept on guys. And I think it, uh, it would do you a disservice not to tell you guys that. Take your advice as you wish. It's up to you guys. And as always, stay savage.